Okay guys, so one of my friends from SoCal is coming up to San Francisco, which is awesome. Killifish friend. And uh, he asked me if I had any Grindle Worm and White Worm starter cultures. And I've also had a couple other people in the club that really want them. And um, you always want to share. So in case your cultures crash, you always have good friends to fall back on. So um, I did make another video a long time ago on how I culture Grindle Worms and how I... Um, separate them out by size so i suggest you take a look at those guys but this is how i make little starter cultures to share with people and i'm halfway through because i was like oh my gosh i should be recording this i'm not used to it yet so anyway let's see so the materials that you need i always have a bucket of cocoa fiber that i've already expanded so i get a brick of cocoa fiber and then I add treated water to it. And it's just, you don't, you definitely don't want it too, um, too, what is it called? Too wet. You definitely don't want it too wet. So this is the consistency that I like to use. So I'm squeezing it. See, and there's just barely water coming out and it holds its shape. Okay. But whenever you touch it, it's pretty loose and crumbly. So ugh, now I'm dirty. Uh, ah! Oh, dang it. Hold on. All right, guys, so now you see why I put towels everywhere because I am so clumsy. Anyway, after Murphy's Law, if you're working with worms, you're gonna spill them on the carpet constantly. So anyway, uh, let's see, what other materials do I have? So I have the cocoa fiber at the correct consistency and also temperature. Grindle worms do well at room temperature. White worms, I will actually have to refrigerate their cocoa fiber uh, overnight so that it gets down to 53 degrees. Because if you try and split white worms into room temperature cocoa fiber, they will, a lot of them are going to die because they're fragile creatures and they um, are not good with temperature shock. So keep that in mind. I'm doing grindle worms tonight and then I'm going to split, I'm going to chill my white worm cultures overnight and then split them tomorrow afternoon. So anyway, um, let's see. I get these giant packs of, um, what are these? Clear deli cups. And I get the shallow ones because these guys don't need a lot of space. So this is what a completed starter culture looks like. So it's just a shallow. I think these are the eight ounce ones. Let me see. Yes, they are the eight ounce ones. I get them at cash and carry which is like a restaurant supplier and this was like three bucks and this was three bucks and it's great because they're nice and cheap um so when you share with friends you want to be as cheap as possible give them the um give them a good culture without breaking the bank so um this is what it looks like empty this is a lid i have a pen a sharpie and my knife this thing is disgusting because um, when I'm trying to, when I burn holes, I like heat it up under a flame and then plunge it through plastic, but we won't have to do that today. And then a fork and lots of towels. Okay, so I, again, I already started because I totally forgot that I should be filming this, but I'm gonna pretend that I haven't. So pretend these are empty. Okay, so these are my old cultures. I keep track of when I started them. This one I started 913 and okay normally the cultures look like this right pretend it's full and then I have this lid on like that and so this was started way long ago 713 okay on these larger cultures the ones I actually feed out of you can see that I have large holes and they are stuck through with uh, coffee filter paper so that uh, insects and stuff can't get in. I really need to replace those because they're starting to look yucky. But this is what a lid looks like whenever you want to feed your fish. So um, before I started working with it, you can see the depressions where the cat food was. Okay, kind of. Can you see that? The depressions where the cat food was. Overnight, they ate a ton of cat food. And when they collect on the lid like this, it's really easy to collect them for your fish. So you should check out 
my video on how I separate them by size. But when I split them, I just pull them up, put the lid on the side, okay. Now what I've started doing is instead of refreshing the entire culture, or you know, taking out the entire culture and starting over, is um, if I have a very established culture, there are tons of worms all through the media, tons of them, mostly on top, but there's tons of worms in there. So what I've started to do so that my cultures aren't completely shocked is I will take sections from the established culture. So I'll pretend. So like I'll take a section like this large and this is hard to do one handed, but I'll just, uh, I'll just take a little bit, right? It's far more graceful with two hands. I'll take a little bit and you can see these are, I was able to take like three from each one, okay? These are chock full of worms, like really, really full of worms. They're great for starters. And then what I do is I refresh all of them with fresh media. So again, I grab some, I'm gonna add some to the starters. Okay. Just a little bit. Oops. Oh, jeez. See, here comes the clumsy. Okay, some small handfuls. You don't want to fill it all the way to the rim. Maybe like a centimeter from the top. Keep everything loose. Don't pack things down. The worms need air too. So you want the mixture to stay nice and airy. Okay. And then I mix it with this Again, it is far easier. Maybe the light's better over here. Okay, it is far easier when you're doing with two hands, but I'm just mixing in the old and the new. The worms will be spread out in here. Okay. Oh, geez, finger. Okay, so I tap it down lightly. Let me see if I could use some more. Nope, that's good. Okay, so I tap it down very lightly. You can use your fingers or your fork. Okay, there you go, perfect. Very lightly again. I take one piece of cat food. I feed all my worms cat food. Just push it into the center. You do, definitely don't want to overfeed them when you start a new culture. They will nucleate around or gather around this kibble. Um, they have to like travel because now they're mixed all through the substrate, right? They all travel all through it and most of them will go to the cat food. So I only put one piece. Put the lid on carefully. Okay. I'm going to become a magician at being one-handed eventually. Okay. Now I make tiny holes on the side. The reason I put them on the extreme edges is so that when you stack them, you can see that all the containers are getting air. If you put them in the center, they'll get covered up by the container on top, okay? And on starter cultures, I make the holes super, oh, Jesus, okay, sorry. All right, so I poked the holes using two hands um, for safety reasons. Anyway, <laughs> I'll take my pen. I have two different kinds of worms, so it's really important that I make sure which one's which, label them. Okay, so Grindles, and today it is 11, 16, cool. All right, and it's done. Here's a stack of starter cultures that I can give to friends and uh, or have backup cultures, okay? So again, the ones that I actually feed out of, I like to use these larger containers. These are more expensive. These are like a dollar a container, which is why it's only for my larger cultures. There are two ways that I refresh cultures. So one way uh, is that I add just half. Okay, I don't bother with the other side. And the reason I started doing that is so that I could still keep feeding using that half. So these worms are established, they're at the surface, okay? However, um, yeah, so hold on, they're at the surface, oh, geez, they're at the surface, 
okay. All right. Let me just make sure that this is all filled in. Again, very lightly tamped down. All right, my phone ran out of memory. Very sad. Um, anyway, uh, so I very lightly tamped down, okay. This side is undisturbed. This side is undisturbed. This side is new media. So the advantage to doing it this way, and I left the worms on here because my fish are already full for today. Uh, the advantage of doing this is I can slowly move the worms over and still harvest from this container. So I'm going to put some here. And these guys are quite ravenous, okay? So there's a lot of worms in here. And then I slowly start to move them over here. So it's like, it's like, um, uh, I can't think of the, I'm tired. Okay, so I'm just going to slowly start to move them over here. Some of them, you don't want to put it too far away. But anyway, the worms are going to smell it. And then they're slowly going to start to migrate. And then I'll put less and less food over here, more and more food over here, and bam. There will still be enough worms to feed on this side. But they will also, a lot of them are going to start moving. So I find this is a really nice trick. Okay, and then I replace the disgusting lid that I will refresh. And then I put the refresh, what is it, 11... 16 here. So that's how I refresh the cultures that I'm currently feeding out of. So and then they so they just migrate back and forth. Okay. So this one still has some food that has not been eaten. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing here. Alright, so that is how I treat my worm cultures. Um, and distribute them out to friends. Oh yeah, so one more thing, the white worms. So for the white worms, I'm going to add fresh media, okay? Like half, because I still need to put white worms in from the culture, right? So I'll put like half of it in here. I'm sorry, I'm so shaky. Okay, I'll put half of it in there. I will get a lid. Okay, and I will refrigerate the media overnight in my white worm bin. Okay, so you can see my established cultures. I find that white worms really like much larger containers than grindles. Okay, so I'll just pull out my established cultures. White worms are more finicky. They're more trouble to keep, but they're amazing food for conditioning. So you can see... Oh, look, here's a nice breeding knot. This is crazy. Look. Whoa! Doesn't that look like a nightmare? Uh, so, I pretty much treat them the same as grindles. Um, occasionally, they'll form these huge breeding knots, which is cool and crazy. I only have to feed them, like, every two or three days, because you can see there's a piece of kibble up there that is still uneaten, and I do not add any more kibble until all of it is eaten from the previous feeding. This one is the best one, so the larger the container, the better the culture is. So you can see the more stable it is. Let's see. Okay, there's still food in there. But I treat them exactly the same, except larger containers. Uh, don't feed them as frequently. I wait for all the food to be used up. And finally, um, they gotta be cold. So, to make starter cultures, I put the fresh media. Oh jeez, I'm gonna put these back first. Okay, so I put the fresh media that I will be started using to start tomorrow in here. There you go. And it's really useful to have a wine cooler in your fish room because I can also keep on hand my brine shrimp eggs, some vi oh geez, some vitamins, and uh, my freshly collected baby brine shrimp, which I'm doing right now. It's taking forever. I will do a video on how I collect it. it takes like five minutes, but I can keep them in here too. So having a wine cooler in your fish room is awesome. And I usually keep the temperature, let's see. It creeped up to 50. Okay, so I keep them at 54, 55 degrees. 
And that is it. Oh yeah, one more thing. White worms absolutely hate light. Hate, hate, hate light. So never ever have light shining on them or they will all die. Okay, cool. Thanks guys. So I forgot to mention my grindle worms I keep at room temperature. This is kind of like my culture shelf. I'm doing a lot of things at once, so <laughs> there's things everywhere. But um, this is like my live culture shelf. Uh, and for extra containers, extra dividers, my paramecium, which I'm going to do a video on eventually because they need to be split badly. <laughs> but my grindle worms are in here. They don't mind light. I don't keep them in direct sunlight, but they don't mind light at all. I just keep them here. Uh, they're not like the white worms in that respect. And I just, just keep them there. So, and they're fine and happy in there. So, all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in.